You know, I used to think cooking was a chore until I discovered that really the more you make things from scratch, the more you are actually connected with the real food that you're working with, the more fun it is. You, you know, we're meant to to actually go out in the fields and, and, and grow things and pick them. I mean, that's how we, and then process it into something that's wonderful and lovely. That's how we've grown as human beings. We've become very disconnected from our food. We've, we're disconnected from the farms and, and maybe we can't all grow our own food, but you can buy fresh food from the farmer's market or from the bulk bin and you can turn it into something that is wonderful. I don't think people realize how much processed food <laughs> they're eating until you take them to their pantry and open it up and you show them what they've got in there. Um, I mean, it's really, really quite shocking. You know, you won't find much of that in my kitchen. I mean, you'll find a lot of jars and containers of stuff that I've made or bought from the bulk bin or whatever. Um, but I know exactly what's going into everything I make. Um, and I don't think most people do, and they're shocked. I mean, they don't, but the thing is, you really can't blame them. Um, you know, they have been, this is how they've been indoctrinated, and they don't realize there is any other way, which is why it's so important for us to be out there, uh, the authors and the chefs and the vegan um, teachers to be out there showing people that there is a different way to eat. You know, when people find out that you can actually make a lot of these pantry items and you don't need to buy a processed version, they're actually shocked and delighted. Um, that's been my general reaction as I've gone around the country showing how to make these foods. They're absolutely delighted. They, they feel liberated. They feel like, oh my gosh, I can make this on my own. I don't have to go and spend this much money or have, you know, high fructose corn syrup in this. I can make this easily and quickly in my own kitchen. They're shocked and thrilled. I think for much of my career, people were just bewildered when I told them what I did as a vegan chef. You know, that, and also just myself over the years, I've learned how to simplify recipes, have learned that a lot of steps aren't really necessary, that there is a shortcut method that works that nobody really knows, if, you know, that it's any different. Um, so it's been a learning curve for me and a learning curve, I think, for the world as they've discovered that there are so many wonderful vegan options for all the foods that they are used to eating. Oh, there's, you know, there's pushback wherever you go, but I think that pushback is diminishing every single year. Uh, there, I think the number of people eating a plant-based diet doubled in 2012, I understand. In 2014, 7% of all new food products was vegan. So it's becoming mainstream. There's a tipping point at around 10% or so when, um, when that really becomes mainstream. So we're really getting close to being mainstream right now, uh, the whole plant-based vegan way of eating. Um, so I think that pushback is diminishing very quickly. This is probably the most exciting time in the world because throughout most of history, people have been stuck in a time and place eating only what's available around them culturally. So wherever you were, whether you were in the bush or you were in Japan or in Europe or wherever, you ate whatever was around. And in the last 50 years or so in America, for the large part of the population, it meant eating processed foods. We're now at a point in history where human beings can make a choice. They can choose to eat processed food or they can choose to eat whole foods organically, um, a plant-based diet. We can now choose once we have the knowledge and the awareness and the instruction. So this is truly liberating that we now have that choice, not only to impact our own health, but we can actually impact the lives of animals, save animals, and we can impact global warming by helping to reverse it by eating a plant-based diet. So more than ever, we have power on our plate to impact so many different realms by choosing what we eat. It's truly exciting. You know, in terms of impacting global warming, we are talking about absolutely everything. Over 51% of all greenhouse gases are attributable to livestock agriculture. Uh, over a third of the land mass in the world is taken up by livestock agriculture. So it's a huge amount. If everyone in the world ate meat and drank milk, we would need so many different, so many earths. We don't even have enough land. We don't have enough resources. And you know, on land or in the sea. And we need to do something right now to start reversing global warming. And the single most important thing you can do to reverse global warning, warming, according to the United Nations, is to adopt a plant-based diet. My mom uh, died of cancer in 2000. So this was a, a little bit after I became a vegan. 
but um, she was, I think she, she was stage four cancer when she was diagnosed, so she was pretty far along. She'd been a lifelong smoker and had eaten a lot of processed Japanese foods. The Japanese sort of discovered processed foods at one point and they started make, she was make, eating instant ramen, instant this, instant that. And um, she was diagnosed and given three months to live. And I put her on a plant-based diet and I started cooking every single meal for her and she lived for two and a half years. And in fact, her um, liver markers went way down and returned to normal, which meant that her cancer was, I think, going away. And she felt so good. She said, I'm not, I'm just giving up this plant. I want to start eating what I want to eat again. And she did. Um, and um, she died quickly thereafter. It was pretty sad. I think, you know, I definitely a pl the health benefits of a plant-based diet are, can't be disputed. I mean, there's just way too many studies and too many um, empirical, empirical evidence about the health benefits of a plant-based diet. You know, I've seen it time and, time and time again with people who have issues that are reversed by uh, eating a whole foods plant-based diet. Once again, when we talk about a plant-based diet for health reasons, we're not just talking about simply an animal-free diet, but one that comprises a, a whole foods plant-based diet. So whole grains, whole legumes, lots of vegetables, fruits, some nuts and seeds, and little or no salt, or little or no oil or sugar. You know, I, if someone's transitioning to a plant-based diet, the first thing I would want to find out is what are their eating habits? What are they accustomed to eating? Because the answer depends on what their likes and dislikes are. You know, obviously if someone's been eating a lot of, uh, I don't know, pizza and corn dogs, um, and they're transitioning to a plant-based diet, I would probably encourage them to take baby steps and maybe substitute uh, more of the transitional foods like veggie dogs, um, you know, making your own vegan cheeses in your kitchen and using those for your own homemade pizzas, something like that. But if someone turns out to be a really sophisticated foodie, then I would steer them on a different course and I would show them how to work with vegetables or uh, how to turn you know, legumes into some delicious concoction or something like that. So it really depends. Um, I try, I have a huge gamut of uh, styles of cuisine that I like to teach. Um, I do specialize in a more of a high-end type of cuisine as well too. So, you know, it really, I think you have to know your audience. Who are they and what are they looking for? And then try to offer them up a menu that will satisfy. Spices and herbs, once again, it's really up to what you're used to. And if your goal is to get them to become a plant-based diet, there are people that never use any spices or herbs and don't even like them. And then there are those that, you know, like more, uh, more flavorful, the better. So it's, I tend to cook with a lot. And, uh, you know, I also cook with lots of other ingredients like porcini mushrooms and, and red wine and things that are a little bit more, you know, um, on the, the foodie end of things as well too. So really, really depends. I also do Asian cuisine. So there's a huge range of flavors that can be captured. I like to express to people how powerful this diet is, that it's really not just a diet. It's really a whole lifestyle that changes, that touches so many different facets of life, not only your own health, but whether or not animals thrive and live on this planet, whether or not we have an, a planet to continue living on in 20, 30, 50, 100 years. That by choosing what you put on your plate, you actually, it's like voting. It's like taking, it's voting for health. It's voting for the animals. It's voting for the planet. So it is absolutely the most important thing you can do. You know, a lot of people who think, well, all I have to do is go vegan and I'll be healthy. Um, well, maybe not. Um, it depends on what kind of vegan you are. Um, I'm a vegan for many, many different reasons, but if you're going vegan primarily for animal welfare reasons or environmental reasons, you may decide it really doesn't matter whether I'm healthy or not. There are those vegans too. And so they're eating vegan donuts and vegan hot dogs and, you know, they're going to every festival there is and gorging on the, the high fat, high sugar vegan foods, and they're not going to be very healthy. Um, also, a lot of people who don't know about veganism do equate it for the health benefits, and so they may not know that just because you take the animal food component out of the food, that it's not, it may not be healthy. Um, there's still a lot of processed vegan foods out there on the market. All you have to do is go to 
the natural food store and just look at all the vegan packaged foods and they're going to be just as they could be just as unhealthy as the uh the 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 equivalent containing animal products so i think the ultimate goal for people transitioning to this diet is to be aware that we want to be ideally a whole foods plant-based we want to lead a whole foods plant-based lifestyle which means trying to eat things that are unprocessed trying to eat whole foods which means cooking your own grains your own beans vegetables fruits um, doesn't and it sounds boring but it's not all of these can be transformed into every single equivalent of any animal product you've ever had and there is absolutely no deprivation whatsoever i guarantee you that <laughs>